Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we're going to change the background of photo and add some nice bouquet. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sol Germany. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the incredible city of Paris, France. And I'm happy to be back in Paris. I just finished a workshop and it's been amazing. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain you how to extract somebody from a photo and add a crazy bokeh background to it. If you want to get the raw files, I'm giving you 12 textures. All you have to do is click here on this link. And if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click here. All right, let me show you this little trick. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, first thing I want to sh explain you, if you follow my tutorials, you know, I say all the time at the beginning that I'm going to offer you, you know, free textures, uh, free raw files, free presets, free brushes. To get that, all you have to do is actually go on my website. Uh, actually, let me log out so I can show you. you. You have to create an account on my website. So I'm going to log out. Okay, so you can see. Uh, so here it says sign up. So first you sign up to create an account. All right. So you just put in your name, last name, email, and password, and it's going to create an account. You have to go to your email and validate that. Once you've done that, uh, you can just click here to lo log in, which is what I'm going to do. Sorry, here. So I'm going to log in with my password. Voila. Once you're logged in, you see this little uh, cloud with a uh, arrow here? You can click here. There you're going to have to access to your courses. All the course you ever bought is going to be here forever. Okay. Eventually you get here you're going to have your photos if you put in some photos. And here you're going to have the subscriber goodies. The way it works, it goes by episode. You can see the episode, what it talks about. You can view the episode and you can download all the goodies. There is over 200 episodes. It's literally hundreds of raw files free uh, presets, free uh, Lightroom actions, uh, uh, Photoshop actions, um, textures, many things. You just have to look at all of them. For example, this week I'm going to give you 12 textures for free, which are bokeh textures that we're going to be using in today's tutorial. So what is today's tutorial? Well, this is a photo of Emily that works with me, who is an actress. You can actually check a demo reel in the description of this video. An amazing actress from Paris who speaks great French and English. I shot this photo of her, but I want to see if it was possible to put her against another more interesting uh, background. Now, the way I did this background is very easy. I just took my camera by night, went out of focus, and of course, this was a nice one. This was an 85 millimeter, but I believe it works with other camera. You just go out of focus, you know, a, a little bit out of focus or a lot out of focus, and you're going to get this sort of bokeh, and you just take the shots. You can try it out with mine if you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit this, and that's very important, as a smart object in Photoshop. Because we're going to have to balance the colors, the luminosity between the texture and the, and, and the photo. So I'm going to open this one as a smart object and I'm going to go right back into Lightroom. I'm going to take, I think, this uh, bokeh. So the trick on bokeh is closer you are to the person's face, bigger the bokeh should be so it looks realistic. So I think this, that's why I've given you 12 different textures because you have different size. I like this bokeh. I think this bokeh is going to work fine with this. And you can in real time, you know, take a photo like this with this bokeh, but you have to have an expensive lens and you have to have a, a way to fill in her face because by night her face is going to be, uh, you know, a lot more in the dark. So some people use flash, you know, uh, to have, you know, this and this and some time. We're going to fake it. So I'm going to right click and edit this as a smart object also. So we have two smart objects open in, in, uh, in Photoshop. I'm going to take this one, which is the background, and I'm going to use the move tool and just click and drag it over this. Now this bokeh has not, is not the same size because this was shot with a Sony A7S, which is only 12 million pixel, and this was shot with the Sony A7R, which is a 36. But that's fine because bokeh textures can be expanded very easily. Just press Command T. I'm going to make the bokeh the size of the photo, roughly. I'm going to press Enter. And it's going to not look weird at all just because, you know, it's um, it's it, it can expand very fast. You can even change it. I'm going to make it uh, less, more rounded. And that's great about this type of texture. It's like clouds. You can expand them as much as you want. I'm going to put this in the back. Okay, and then I'm going to work on extracting her. So for this, I'm going to take the Move tool. Now, I've done a whole bunch of retouching on her, which is included in a smart object. Uh, that And, 
check out my tutorials on portrait retouching in Lightroom to see how I, you know, the type of retouching that I do. But the, the, the main point was more to show you how you can change the background very easily. So you take the quick select tool, you, pr you can press on Alt and Control and, and click, left click on your mouse and drag and drop to change the opacity of the brush. And I'm just going to make a big brush stroke on her. Boom. All right. And then I'm going to zoom in a lot. You see here, there is some, some part of the, of the door here. So I'm going to press W and I'm going to make this very small. And then as I'm on the uh, select tool, I'm just going to press Alt. And with the Alt, I am unselecting just a little bit. I did here too much, so I'm going to take Alt off and put this back in. Let me, let me this make this even more small and Alt and boom, making a selection. Isn't that crazy? It is totally crazy. Okay, I mean, it's very approximate because we're going to use a, you know, the refine edge to make this go a little bit better. Okay, so once you've done that, then we're ready for the refine edge. So I'm going to make sure you're on the move to, uh, on the uh, select tool, which is W, the keystroke, refine edge. And on refine edge, I'm going to use the edge detection brush. I'm going to make it not too big. I'm just going to brush here a little bit. And that should do the trick of finding what is a hair, what's not a hair. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing here. Now the problem with this br uh, with this refine edge, it works, but not all the time. It 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 can do some weird things also, and you're just going to have to sort of deal with it. And there's some tricks around, like for example here, I can see it's it's doing something kind of weird. And um, I show you a cool trick that uh, a friend showed me the other day, which I find is really cool to. Uh, Make this better. Okay, so it looks like I got a pretty decent thing. Usually, I like to also do a little smart radius, a very small one, like 1.5 pixels. That's gonna make the edge look a bit better. And I like to little do a little smooth, like four, a little feather. That's just gonna make the uh, the selection a little bit more, you know, approximate, a bit less, you know, very sharp and cut. And on chief edges, I usually go like minus nine. So a little bit of smoothing, a little bit of feathering. And voila. Now on the output, I'm just going to put output to selection. Click OK. So that we, when we click OK, we just have a selection. And voila. Now, there is something people don't know very much uh, in, in Photoshop, which is really cool. It's called the, the quick mask mode. The way you enter the quick mask mode is you have a selection like this and you press Q. And you get again this red being selected. But now uh, you can take a little brush and you can zoom in. I usually zoom in like 100 to 1%. Take a brush, um, put the harness around 85, that's very important, and the size, I'm going to make it very small, like 40, and you can, you know, oops, voila, and all right, let me show you. When I paint with white, it's going to take out the selection. If I press X and I'm 100% opacity on my brush and I paint is black, it's going to put back the selection. So all I want is, you know, I just go around. For example, here I'm going to add some more selection, and what you, what what you can do is you just press hold on your the shift key, and you just you know go around here, and make sure you see uh, here it's not fully selected, so I am going to fully select that. Uh, actually, not because this was the part w that shouldn't be selected. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to undo that. Yeah, that's the part where it mixed up with the door. Actually, you know what? My selection, okay, I don't know what I did here. My selection is pretty good and and, uh, and the um, the refine edge did an awesome job. The first time I tried this, I had a lot of correction, but let's say you had something to correct. You can correct this like this. Okay, Q is gonna take you out of the quick mask. So now we have the select section, which is corrected. Honestly, I didn't do much on it. Uh, and then you just click here on the mask and boom, she, it's mask. Now I'm going to use the move tool and maybe put her a little bit to the right. And now here comes the tricks. Now you see we have different exposures, but both of them are smart objects. So I can double click on her and make her a bit darker. Uh, you know, a bit darker, maybe uh, open up even more the shadows so her face is a bit brighter. Uh, add some magenta maybe and some yellow make her make her a bit more warm but not too much because this we're going to deal later on and uh, but add more contrast because you know night photos are more contrasty let's see how that looks because right now she looks like she's really not there okay that's kind of better but uh, now her face is too uh, is too dark so I can I'm you know what I'm just going to take a little brush and I'm going to make sure 
I'm going to click here on plus. It's going to put everything down to zero except the exposure. And then I'm just going to put the flow and density very low. And I'm just going to brush a little bit on her face just to make it brighter. It's a bit too much. You're going to have to be very subtle with that. Maybe like 125. Good. And click on OK so that she's dark. But, you know, we still see her face a little bit better. OK, not a big change, but OK. And the, boc the bokeh, we can do the same thing. You can go here. On the bokeh, I'm going to go more blue and uh, maybe more magenta a little bit, you know, and brighter. So because it's smart object, you just get, and without distracting anything, you can just, you know, make it, uh, try to make it fit even more, you know. Now here is some really weird things uh, with, uh, because you can see some of the blue of the door, but it kind of gets mixed up there. So what you can do is you can go on the mask, take a brush, and uh, let's make the brush very sh small, like maybe 12, uh, 18 pixel in density. And um, now white, okay, you just make sure you're with, uh, white is going to make her appear and black is going to take out, is going to make her disappear. So I'm on the mask and I want to maybe, no, black, that's not going to do it. What's happening is the harness is way up. So I'm going to put zero. All right. And that's not doing any good. So let's go the other way around. Let's go with white to make her appear. Uh, you know why? Because I'm just on a bokeh thing right here. And you just play around until you kind of get this mixed up. Actually, I'm going to add some white here uh, to make the door appear. But it kind of works well because of the bokeh has different colors. It looks like the bokeh is behind her, which is what we want. So it's kind of cool. Let me move the bokeh a little bit around so it's not behind her. Press Command-T to uh, make it even bigger. I'm going to zoom out, zoom out. Command-T, make this a little bit bigger. Well, I just don't want a bokeh right there. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Now, one thing one thing which sometimes helps, because you see, you're always going to have some have some weird things around the hairs. And like here, for example, you see this little weird things? That kind of looks fake. So one way that sometimes helps is to go on the photo itself, once you cut the mask, go into inner shadow. Okay, and first thing is, that's you see, that's the color. Take the color. You can just pick a color that's very close to her body. So, but a dark one. Take a dark one like this one. Okay. And... Um, Make sure the angle is up. Why? Because it's going to make the inner shadow come uh, as much on the left than it's on the right. I'm going to boost the distance. You see how it makes things darker here? And I'm going to boost the size. OK. And uh, le let me click on OK. Let me zoom in so you can see before the inner shadow, after. Just make the hairs come in. You know, it takes a little grayish off the hairs. Okay, before, after, before, after. You see, it just makes her more there. Okay, now two more things to do to get her even more into this environment is um, I'm going to, one thing, uh, oh, one little trick you can do uh, on uh, on portraits is I shot this with a 70 millimeter and 70 millimeter has a tendency to make her look a bit more wide than she really is. So what you can do is press Command T on the smart object and holding the Alt key, I'm just going to make her, her just a little tiny more, uh, you know, thinner. Because that's how she truly is, and it was just a distortion from the lens. Okay, now I'm going to add two things. First thing I'm going to add is a little photo filter. Now, photo filter is really cool because it's going to, it's on top, it's going to get applied to the foreground and the background. So it's going to help mix both. So this is uh, by default you got a warm, uh, warming filter 85 which is probably what I'm going to use and I'm going to put a bit more I'm going to put it the whole way so you can see what it does it really influences the entire photo I'm just going to put it maybe around 50% okay let me show you the before after just makes you see how it makes all the colors a bit the same uh, okay you can try different filters you can go to a cooling filter but cooling filter makes her look diff I don't like how it makes her look maybe the warming filter this one 
No, I think I'm going to take the filter 85. And uh, maybe that's a bit too much. I'm going to just do it like 30%. It just helps blend the, the colors between the two. And last but not least, to make her stand even more there, I'm going to create a new layer, taking into account all we've done so far by pressing Command, Alt, Shift, E. You've got to have four fingers. Command, Alt, Shift, E. Command, Alt, Shift, T. Thing after me. All right. So once you've done this, you've got a layer that's taken into account all we've done so far. And now, you take a little optical marquee tool, make a big circle close to her face. To t position it properly, you can go to, uh, I like to go to Select, Transform Selection. And now you can really put that selection there. Um, make it big, make it a little big, but uh, around the portrait, it's, and now we're gonna go to this filter, we're gonna take Select, and this selection, we're going to make it feather. This is a very high def photo, so it's going to be a favor, a feather of, uh, let's put it like 300. 300 is good. Okay, and then, my, and then I'm going to put this in a multiply. By doing this in multiply, the entire photo becomes much darker, much more saturated. But I have an active selection now that if I delete, you see it's going to make a, a whole vignette effect ar around her. Uh, but I like how it does. I'm just going to lower the opacity. Do it as much as you want, but... Uh, not, and you see it blends. You see it makes her uh, her bottom here darker. Also, it's kind of cool. And voila, uh, maybe you know. And at this point, usually what I do is I go and look. You know, s other things come back in ten minutes, and just you know change as I as I you know as I see things that don't work together. But that's this is where we came from. Uh, she was on that background, and this is where we are, where she is in the night. Okay, so I put my attention with my eyes on other things for 10 minutes, and I'm looking at this photo. I'm going to go to File, Close. I'm going to save it. It's going to re-import it into Lightroom, and I'm going to do some final touches there. It's very important when you finish retouching something that you go look at other things, because your eyes is going to adapt to the colors and the luminosity and the contrast of the photo. By looking at other things, what's going to happen is that your eyes is going to, you know, is going to look at it with a fresh start. Okay, so there we have the photo back. Uh, so on this one. I think I'm just going to, you know, open up the shot. I'm going to do one more retouching. I'm going to add some more contrast to it, a little bit more contrast, maybe. Uh, maybe not so much contrast. I'm going to bring the whites up a little bit, make the whole thing a bit brighter. Something like that. And the blacks, no, not the blacks. Maybe open up a bit more the shadows, just not too much. And the highlights, voila, I'm not going to do much, but I thought that it was a bit too dark. Let me show you the before with the backslash key, uh, subtle, just more contrast. And so it's kind of, it, it would be very hard in real life to take such a photo because taking a photo, as I tell you, in the middle of the night without a flash is not easy. So it's a cool trick you can apply on, on, on a very much photo. Just remember to really open them as smart objects. So I'm going to give you for free all these textures you can play around with using this technique and you know trying to make your photo fake that you were using a very expensive lens and a field flash uh, you know, without really doing it. Hope you like this and I'll see you in another episode.